guys and welcome back to Lena Wonders. So today I'm going to be doing a very special video. It will be a QA. and a um, I hit 1,500 subscribers and I know that that seems like a pretty small number but just some background on this channel and my experience with booktube. Um, I started my channel in 2015 and in late 2017 slash early 2018, I sort of made the decision to kind of step back from it a little bit and um, <laughs> and basically become one of those people that doesn't post a lot. And my main reason for that was just that number one, I felt super tired. Number two, I wasn't satisfied with the way that I was reading books and the way that I was discussing books. And at the time, I also used to film on a G7X. So I just, I felt like, sort of the embodiment of form without content where I was posting these super high-res videos that were kind of lengthy and you know I was editing on like the super fancy software but but I felt like I wasn't really saying anything and I think that taking that break really allowed me to reevaluate what it was that I wanted to do not just with this channel but also with my life so in the span of sort of leaving booktube as someone who posts um religiously like every saturday i have been able to sort of reevaluate the things that i want to read the genre that i want to write in i've gone to grad school and so sort of restarting my youtube or like my booktube journey has been a big thing for me and with that initial stepping away i already had kind of um, accepted the fact that the channel would probably lose momentum and i feel like um with booktube in particular we do tend to kind of gravitate toward our peers and talk to people who we started booktube with and i think a lot of the people that i started booktube with either are no longer on booktube or have also drifted toward other communities um yeah and of course being someone who hasn't been active in that, there's really uh, not a lot that I can say. So I guess one challenge for me getting back into it as well was like, what channels do I watch now? And what channels um, do I kind of engage with? So yeah, so without further ado, let's get on to the questions. Okay, so the first question is, what is your favorite genre? <sighs> okay, so that's really hard for me because honestly, I think I just like everything. Um, I don't think there's one genre that I would alienate on the basis of it just being a genre. There are certain things that I don't like within certain genres, but there's no one genre that like, oh, like, I don't really like this just because it's a certain medium. Um, so maybe what I can do is to sort of tell you more about my sensibilities when it comes to each genre. So. For fiction, hands down, I think my favorite genre is probably fantasy. Um, I can be very picky about fantasy though, and there are certain tropes that I enjoy. There are certain things that I will naturally gravitate towards. Like if it's people sort of heading into a different world, automatically that's something that I know I will be super into. Like Philip Pullman's Northern Lights trilogy, that's my jam. Um, for more YA stuff, um, anything by Cornelia Funk. Diana Wine Jones, I really like that. Um, I also like uh, The Lies of Locke Lamora, so that's a little bit more like a different world altogether or like an alternative world altogether. Um, yeah, I also really, really enjoy Lord of the Rings, of course. Um, when I was in fifth grade, I dislocated my left knee, and so for almost a year, I was wearing an immobilizer, and so I couldn't do any of the fun things that I like to do, like run around the neighborhood and terrorize people, <laughs> and also uh, play soccer uh, during recess and stuff, so I was just sort of sitting around the classroom, and during that time, Lord of the Rings came out, like the movie, and I was just obsessed with it like have you guys ever had um, a childhood crush that was just like I love this character so much I was so obsessed with Aragorn as a kid and I read so freaking far into it like the appendices and like what happens to him and Arwen after the whole thing and then I got obsessed also with sort of the ancestry of their story so I also ended up buying the children of Hurin and just like binging on Luthien and Baron stuff <laughs> My first legit email address was actually tinuville at yahoo.com just because you know just because I love I love that 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 world so much. And then for nonfiction or creative nonfiction, I think my favorite genre is hands down memoir. 
I'm very interested in the human experience. Um, I was a psychology graduate and so I'm very very interested in like experiences and how people process them and how they package them or like repackage them to themselves and then repackage them as literature to be read. So that's always something that uh, I find intriguing and I find easy to get into because you're not expecting, you know, you're not expecting to sort of step into the world of this person, unlike in fiction, because you are already acknowledging that this is someone else's experience. So I find that very refreshing. For poetry, I think poetry is my favorite genre, although, you know, I will admit that I sort of am um, more, <laughs> like, I'm very biased and very choosy, like, very picky when it comes to poetry, so I do tend to like more, um, more just poetry that's a little bit more academic in its sensibilities. Yeah, so I think you would probably call that like formalist, maybe. Yeah, formalist in the Russian formalist sense, which is like um, I, I like looking at language kind of as an artifact, uh, something that you can study, and I like looking at the logic of a poem. So I do enjoy some poems also that are more narrative driven, but for other poems, like I like looking at the syntax, I like looking at the way that a line cuts and leads you into like a trap door within the poem where a certain logic shifts or certain images change in what they're trying to tell you within the poem. So those are the kinds of poems that um, I tend to enjoy. Next question. <laughs> what book do you think is overhyped? Oh my god. I think The Name of the Wind, honestly. I actually did an entire video on that book and how much it was just such a pain like for me to finish it. I really, really didn't like it. Um, yeah, I didn't like it. Um, I understand why a lot of people enjoy it, um, but I didn't find Koth or Kovoth. I didn't find Koth very interesting as a character. Um, I did find the way that they treat materials in that world interesting. There's something very Avatar about it, like Avatar The Last Airbender. So I liked that, where it was like elemental and it was more about negotiating with the reality. But I didn't like the characters, I didn't like the way that people were described, and the plot for me was meh. Like, it's alright, but you know, I wouldn't sit through like another 500 pages of that. And with that, what do I think is the most underrated book? Hmm, most underrated book. I think Magic for Beginners by Kelly Link. It did get a lot of buzz, um, sort of within a niche community that likes reading Kelly Link, but I feel like there needs to, I don't know, I feel like she deserves a lot more, honestly. Um, I feel like the, the stories in that were just so heartwarming, well-written, but also disturbing enough to make you reevaluate certain themes in your life and really like think about them. So yeah, uh, definitely Magic for Beginners by Kelly Link. Okay, so the next question is, what's your favorite summer read? So actually, it isn't summer in the Philippines right now. Uh, right now, it's July and July is rainy season for us. So I'll assume that this just means July read then. Um, so I think my favorite summer, summer read is probably this old bad boy. So this is Trick Mirror by Gia Tolentino. And Gia Tolentino is Filipino-American. And oh gosh, like I will do like an in-depth thing about this book in my reading wrap-up because I have so many thoughts about it. But all I can say right now is like Gia Tolentino is so smart. She's so smart and the way that she writes is just so clear-cut and there's something addictive about her writing where she kind of marries pop culture with personal experience um, while still being able to talk about very political things, like very social political things. Like she doesn't ever write in a vacuum. And um, she actually used to write for Jezebel and The New Yorker. So she's able to write things with a very feminist point of view but still sort of acknowledge the different facets within feminism that make it engaging, that make it alienating, that are seeking to move things forward, and that sometimes can also be reductive. So yeah, 
very good book and I definitely would recommend. So next question, what's your favorite poem, favorite flash fiction, and favorite short story? So maybe I will just answer what my favorites are at the moment. Okay, so for favorite poem, hold up. Actually, maybe I can read it to you guys. Okay, so at the moment, I am reading One Secret Thing by Sharon Olds and gosh, like this book is kind of like part memoir, part poetry and I just, I really like it. And so this is my favorite from, my favorite from this so far. The Signal by Sharon Olds. When they brought his body back, they told his wife how he died. The general thought they had reached the beach and sent in his last reserves. In the smoke screen, the boats moved toward shore. Her husband was the first man in the first boat to move through the smoke and see the sand, dark with bodies, the tanks burning, the guns thrown down, the landing craft wrecked and floored with blood. In the path of the bullets and shells from the shore, her husband had put on a pair of white gloves and turned his back on the enemy, motioning to the boats behind him to turn back. After everyone else on his boat was dead, he continued to signal. Then he too was killed, but the other boats had seen him and turned back. They gave his wife the medal and she buried him and at night floated through a wall of smoke and saw him at a distance, standing in a boat facing her the gloves blazing on his hands as he motioned her back. So yeah, that's my favorite. And oh my God, I'm so excited for my reading wrap up because I really want to talk about this um, Sharon Olds book because I swear like the structure of this is so, so... So for favorite flash fiction, I think I'll probably have to go with Lydia Davis. She has this very, very short piece called The Dog Hair. And I think that that is like the perfect illustration, like chef's kiss of what flash fiction should be, where it's short and sweet but still complete. For short story, I think it would probably have to be I Can See Right Through You by Kelly Ling. Um, this was published in McSweeney's a couple of years ago and you can actually read it for free online. So I'll link it in the comment section below. It's so freaking good, like the use of language, the use of images, the juxtaposition of Hollywood with tarot and Ouija boards and like esoteric mystical stuff is just so good and it's worth every word like it's a long story but it's really really good and I feel like you don't come out of it feeling shortchanged and you don't come out of it like feeling as though your time was wasted even though the narrative isn't straightforward and you don't necessarily uh, get fed like the conclusions of things next question is a little bit more personal so the question is I remember you saying that you were an atheist what got you into tarot and astrology Okay, so first uh, I will say that yes, um, I still am an atheist. Like I still think that um, just this concept of like an old man in the sky kind of watching us, I think doesn't really make sense to me. And yeah, yeah, that's all I'll say. Like I respect other people for believing what they believe, but that's what I believe. And um, for tarot and all of that like sort of mystical stuff, Actually, I think that a lot of it is very rooted in sort of like paying attention to the connectivity of things and I think that a lot of it is rooted in like cycles of the moon, cycles of the sun, um, very nature worship kind of things and I feel like nature is something that exists, like it's not something that you can really refute because it's it's there like it happens of course um a lot of people like don't really think about um like like when they think about tarot and the zodiac and all of that like they see it as something ridiculous or like something that's sort of irrational but actually like it's worked a lot for me like there are lots of things that i've been able to look at in my life because of tarot reading so <laughs> for nothing else i think one thing like the pragmatist in me is just like well it works so yeah so it's harder for me to disbelieve something that works than it is for me to believe something that works if that makes sense and also i feel like more than anything else like tarot is a tool so it's a tool that can help you sort of read the energies around your life um, it can help you tell the stories that you're not willing to tell much like um, a projective test in psychology 
where there are some things that are subconscious and which your consciousness will not allow you to look at directly. And so as you read the sort of the story in the cards, everything sort of, you know, uh, resurfaces or is allowed to surface at least. So yeah, so that's my answer. And if you guys have more tower related questions, uh, let me know. Right, so now let's move on to the questions that are more about writing. There are only two. The first one is how do you deal with writer's block? And the second one is how do you find your voice? Okay, so first I think uh, I'll probably touch on like the how to find your voice thing because I feel like that answer also connects to um, what to do if you have writer's block. Okay, so first I think that um, to find your voice, it's not really finding it as much as it is developing it. I feel like everyone kind of has the capacity to tell their stories and really more than anything, I think writing is a skill. Um, I think that some people do have more, um, I guess like talent, but really I think that talent is also because those skills have been reinforced over time. So like if you're a kid and people praise you because um, you write well, then of course you are going to start investing more time in writing well. So I think the first step to finding your voice is probably to acknowledge that it's something that will take a lot of work and that it is something that you will develop as opposed to just stumble upon one day. Um, I think the best way to do that is to start reading people. Like figure out what kind of books you like to read, um, figure out what else is out there. Because you know, sometimes you can like something, but it's not necessarily um, the best way like to get your, uh, your knowledge. So yeah, so read a lot and then see what you like in that and how it works. And also look up different frameworks for reading work because it will also allow you to frame your writing and to see where you are coming from as a writer. And sort of to tie that in with writer's block, um, I guess for me, the way that I get out of it is just like to free write. Um, sometimes I think writer's block comes as a result of putting too much pressure on yourself. Like you have to write this certain genre, it has to be this many pages, blah blah blah. Or in poetry, it can't be more than these stanzas. So yeah, I think it's a good idea to just kind of take a step back and um, let yourself do what you seem to want to be doing. And so with that also, I think it's a good idea to have a certain number of authors that you like reading no matter what mood you're in. And sometimes reading them can also help you get out of a funk. Like it can help you remember what kind of stuff you want to write, what kind of writer you want to be. Yeah. And that's it for this video. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for like being here and for subscribing to this channel. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it. And if you're new and this is the first video of mine that you've ever watched, I hope it was worth your time. And I hope you'll subscribe if you liked it. So yeah, that's it for now. Um, thank you guys so much again, 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 again. Thank you, super. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!